This is a very unusual way to start a video showing you this dust from a rock. It's not talcum powder or anything, although it looks like it. But what we've been doing is drilling into this rock. And we're not doing building works or anything, but we are going to do penging. And who have we got here but Padma Priya, one of our staff, and here's Jerry from Toronto. If you remember the video when I went to Toronto, he was my minder, as it were. He drove me everywhere. He looked after me in Toronto, and we did the tour of all the Toronto Bonsai Society events. Now, we have here Padma Priya, who I regard as quite a skilled uh, person, in fact, an expert in making these rock landscapes of Penjing. A lot is said about Penjing and we read about it in Chinese books and in Chinese magazines. But because I have here Jerry Zhang, isn't it? You're from Shanghai, but you are a Canadian citizen. So you will know the actual meaning of the word Penjing. So what is the word Penjing in Chinese in Mandarin or Shanghai? Well, Penjing is Mandarin. Oh. In Chinese, we call it Penjing. Meaning Pun. It means Peng, it means the pot. pot. Jing, it means the scenery. Ah, same. So in Cantonese, we call it Pun King. Yes. Pun King. Pun King, yes. Yeah, Pun King. Yeah. So um, uh, I noticed that many people say Pun Jing is a kind of landscape. Correct. It's kind of landscape. But to my understanding, Pun Jing is more scenery in the pot. Yes, it is landscape in a pot. Yes. Yeah, scenery. Uh, like mountain water, mm. like yesterday you yes, showed me yes. the English countryside. Yes. It's a beautiful scenery. scenery. Then people will try, the punching people try to mm. put the scenery on the pot. In the pot. See. Yes. Okay, <laughs> many people perhaps don't understand uh, the true meaning and essence of Beijing because those who are purest in bonsai I was talking to someone or reading somewhere that the Japanese poo poo, they in fact look on the Chinese penjing as something inferior. They say, oh, the Chinese cannot visualize a bonsai for what it's worth. They always say that when they have a bonsai, they got to put a figure to make it look like a big tree because they cannot imagine in their mind that it's a big tree. So they, the Japanese people, in fact, laugh at the Chinese. They say, oh, why do they put these little figures? Why do they put these little rocks um, to make it look like a scenery when you can imagine <laughs> it in a big tree in a bonsai without these uh, artificial aids? They don't understand. They don't understand. So <laughs> I have written about it in my first book, Bonsai, The Art of Growing and Keeping Miniature Trees, which I wrote in 1984. And I do explain the um, meaning, true meaning and essence of the Chinese approach to bonsai. So I have a um, notion, or this is my fantasy maybe, that when the Chinese in ancient days, thousand years, two thousand years ago, when they went to the mountainside and especially the literati, the artists, they went to the mountains and went to the countryside and saw the beautiful scenery, they painted the scenery on paper. But some people went a step further and they tried to recreate that scenery in three-dimensional form, in real yes. form, using right. rocks to resemble the mountains and yes. using small trees to resemble the big trees they see in nature. Yes. So that is how I imagine bonsai started, because they tried to recreate everything in a miniature scale in this landscape form. Yes. So this, this is, is how I think it started. The, this is the, as I understand to my knowledge, um, when I first come to notice the word Ponzai, I will very astonished. Oh. Why people say Ponzai? Mm. It's Ponjing. Oh. And um, uh, I didn't read a lot. I, I, I don't read a lot. But uh, when I uh, was in China, I met uh, many older people, literary people. They do this. And then I, when I was very young, and I, I know that this is scenery. Oh. It's nothing to do with only plant. Oh. So uh, 
I go to know that you uh, we are today we are talking about this uh, topic, Penjing and Pen. This is what I am also thinking. It's a totally different thing. Oh. Penzai could be anything, any like tree or plant. Doing a painting or a sculpture. Yeah, Penzai you can be you can put any plants on the pot. Oh. This is a Penzai. Oh. Pengjing is a totally different story. Pen As Jing, you said, yes. Jing is mean scenery. scenery. As you said, oh. many literary people people use brush. But the word paint. Bons, bonsai in Japanese, the script is same in Chinese, that is pun choi, is it? Yeah, but original chai, it means plant. Yes. Uh, it's a verb, oh. not a name. Oh. It's a verb, chai, it means all plants. Oh. All plants. Oh. You just put on the pot. Oh. Chai, it means, chai is a, is a verb. I thought it means pun su, no? No, it should pun be choi. pun jing. Oh. Jing, it means scenery. Oh. But there is another word called Pung Choi. Pung Choi, yes, Pung Zai. That means? The Pung Zai. Zai. A tree in pot. A tree in pot. pot. That is yeah. how all kinds of tree, or all kinds of tree <laughs> anything. Yeah. Okay. But Pung Jing is totally different. Okay. So today scenery. we are going to make the scenery. <laughs> and yeah, we are making we say, scenery. <laughs> we don't have to be Chinese, it is just an medium of expression. Yeah, of course. Like painting and sculpture, yes, yes. anyone everybody, can do. Everybody can, can make do. sculpture, make oh, a painting. scenery on the pot. Yeah, so we are copying <laughs> originally the Chinese concept. So we will ask Padma Priya, who I regard as quite expert at bonsai, to show you. And if you can tell us what are the materials you are using for making. So, as always, we have a shallow uh, Oval pot, that is ideal, but you can use other pot, maybe even rectangular pot, shallow. Okay? Yes, yes. yes. Uh, uh, we were just talking a little bit earlier on about whether we were going to go for a lake formation, where we were going to fill part of this with water or not. Um, but essentially, my criteria for that is whether there's holes in the yes, bottom or okay. not. So there's holes in the bottom of this pot, so uh, instead of going for a water, just landscape. Landscape. We're just going to go for an earth landscape. So, um, again, I'm only using the rocks that are on the nursery. It's if, Chinese rocks, yes. 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 Yeah. If I had, um, if I had the time, I would go out and hunt for particular rocks. So uh, the ones I make at home, mm. it can take me months to find all the rocks. But so this is just a collection of stuff that we've got on the nursery. Yeah, from so, China. Yeah. So you know, these are largely pieces of Slates rock that with yeah, cemented together. we think it is, and it's cemented yeah. together. Yeah. So uh, ideally, I'm going to try and hide the cement as much as I can. So some of the design is kind of s spoken for by. Okay. the nature of the material. So what do you do first? Arrange the rocks first. So firstly I look at all of the rocks um, and then what I do is I place them in um, and I've marked all of these up to where I thought it looked nice. Okay. So um, so if I put these back in, that's E, so that goes there somewhere. Um, that was B goes there. Uh, and that's going to go there. For our YouTube viewers, I should just mention that these sort of rocks that the Chinese produce for the uh, pinjing or bonsai work, they are meant to resemble these mountains you find in China. I remember when my wife used to do the Chinese tours, these three river gorge tours, uh, the, what is it, those rocks they find in the mountains. Huh? Uh, Guailing, the Guailing yeah. Mountains is some, something similar to this. So you do find mountains like this in China. Yeah. So this is one arrangement. Yeah. Um, obviously I'm sure you could make yeah. many different arrangements, but this is the one that, um, you know, we've only had 15 minutes to prep, so uh, yeah. this is kind of so what I'm going to go see, with. See, uh, if I can just remark, I don't know whether you did consciously or unconsciously, we always try even in the rocks to arrange a slight triangular shape, or does it matter or not? Um, for me, it's about trying to replicate that scenery that oh, you see okay. in those um, poetry. Oh, it doesn't need uh, to be central. Yeah, and the pictures. Oh, okay. So um, I definitely don't think it should be okay. central. Right. Um, okay. I think, Fine. think asymmetry is always... No, no, I mean, the, the, you the don't right. have to have a triangular shape. 
you can have an asymmetric triangle, but you don't have to have the tallest one roughly in the middle. Or no, no, no. You I can mean, have the tallest one at the side. You, you could do, yes, yeah, okay. you could do, okay. by all means. Yeah, okay. it's just so generally the best way I think of learning how to do this style is, is to get pictures of scenery. Yes, that's right. And then try Even and copy time. it. Okay. If you agree, but that's, so that's all I've done, okay. and I'm not an expert. So. Uh, so do you stabilize the rocks or? Yes. So. Once I've decided where I think I'm going to put the rocks, um, I then need to stabilise them. Now, some of these, uh, quite handily, are flat on the bottom, yeah. so they're going to stand up on their own. Yeah. But there was two of these rocks that are a bit, uh, a little bit You're not going to stick it with arrow or any other um, place. If I was, if I was going to doing this at home, I would use CT100, because it glues everything and you, it, it, nothing moves okay, after that. Right. So that's what I use. Um, I'm sure Arrow Dyke would do an equally good job, but CT100 okay. goes down to a ridiculous So we're not cementing it? We're just, no, we're just going to relying on in. the soil to hold it? Well, we're going to wire them in. Okay, so all, all of these right. are going to be wired good. in, just okay. like we would do okay, trees. Okay, we'll see how you yeah. do it. Okay, so on this one, um, we're going to need to drill a hole through. Yes, so, drilled. so this yeah. is what Peter yeah. was talking about. So, um, so I'm going to have to come in from the other side of this. But so you're drilling the hole for the wire to go through. That's exactly. Okay. It. All right. So all I've done is gone yes. through this side. So now I'm going to have to drill through right. the other side. So yeah. I'm sure you don't need. To. We've got a hole through our centre piece of rock here. Okay. Can see. So you put a wire. Put a wire okay. through it. Okay. So I'm matching it back up to yeah. my markings, and then I'm just going to place the wire down through the holes. So you're fixing the rock with wire. Are available. Okay. So there are many ways of doing it. You can either stick it with all sorts of resins and glues. Uh, I think why you can change the position is not permanent. That's what I like. Yes. You know, you don't know whether the yeah. the landscape's gonna survive yeah. the process. Yeah. So if you stuck everything uh, yeah. in where it is, yeah. then you you're a bit restricted. Okay. So fine. that's our first one in. Uh, you can come back to me once I've fitted the yeah, others. Okay. Yeah. One, two, three, four pieces of rock in. So I'm just putting the last piece of rock in now. Um, so I've left the wires long because I'm going to use these wires to then tie, tie the, the trees, trees in. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. So that's so it's not that it's untidy. It's just that that's. And that's a micropot, by the way. Yes. I think micropot, you can be more free in handling the pot. If a ceramic pot, the chance of breakage is very high. So, we've now got our basic rock structure okay, good. Okay. formation. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start trying out trees. These right. are just... Um, if I was doing it at home, I'd probably grow cotoneasters in these because they grow nice and quick yeah, and they've yeah. got flowers yeah. and they, they, they just work really well in landscapes, I think. But we've, we've got some Chinese elms here, so all I'm going to do is just settle these yeah. in various different positions and decide where I think okay. uh, these are going to go. What I feel like I need to do is build the soil level up mm -hmm. first yeah. before I start putting trees mm. in. So. If you was just to stick trees up at high level like this, with no direct route through to the reservoir for water down the bottom, then the trees aren't yeah. going to survive. So what I did on the previous video uh, we did, I just got some clay from the field, yeah. but I've seen a different technique which... I'm Why don't you using. just use ordinary compost? Um, because I want a nice open mix so that the roots can find their way through nice okay. and easy. Right. Um, but you could you yeah. could use compost, yeah. but this is just another another way of doing it. Plus also what I'm using here is a mixture of fine acadama mm. and sphagnum moss. Yeah. See, no, not everyone has acadama in different parts of the world. That's okay. why I mentioned that. Yeah, right. yeah. The, the sphagnum moss will also really help water retention because mm. obviously when you've got air on yeah, all sides okay. of the soil, right. it's going to dry out quicker. I so, hope it won't put people off because in different parts of the world, like in India, they don't have all the mud soil. You don't have to use that. You can use it no. if you wish. So we're just going to mix this together and we're going to add water and we're basically going to make um, like a, a muddy clay mm. muck, really. Mm. So, um, yeah, thanks, Jerry. Lovely, that should do, I think. We have, in fact, got clay in our <laughs> land. If you dig one metre under the ground, 
We have pure clay, blue clay. Yeah. But what we used before was this stuff. Yeah, this, when we dig our foundations, we have clay. So that's what we've yeah, used that's in the, the past. That's the clay for us. So yeah. you can use that. Yeah. yeah. I just think the rocks would find it easy. Oh, yeah. Sorry, the okay. roots would sure. find it easier to get through this. Yeah. So, so we're looking for something that's going to hold together. Yeah. So a little bit more water, please. Sorry. Yes, but you can see I've still got some holes down yeah. here. So what I've done in the past is I've put mesh over yeah. all the holes. But another way you can do it is just by using sphagnum moss. Yeah, that holds it. And, and I really like this because, yeah. again, if, if there's any chance of your trees drying out, uh, the sphagnum moss might just make the difference between yeah. holding that little bit of essential moisture. So I'm just going to plug the holes first that I can see so that the soil doesn't just fall out the bottom. And then I'm just going to use our normal bonsai mix to mm -hmm. fill this a little yeah. way up because there's no, no need to yeah. have that muck everywhere. So I'm just going to go and grab some of that. to get in it between the rocks really you don't want any uh, air pockets some roots will travel through air pockets but some won't I don't know which ones are which so I always err on the side of caution and make sure there are no air pockets so I'm just going to start packing some of this muck into here just to start building up my my ground where I think I might and this also obviously helps to I wouldn't say cement the rock in place, but certainly helps to stabilise the rock in position. I'd never, if I want to set a plant in here, I want to make sure, or even moss, I want to make sure that there's some soil in there. So I'm going to make sure there's that. So I'll work away on working this muck into this structure, and then we can position our trees where I think I'm most likely to be planting some trees. Okay. Yeah. So now I've got now I've got the basic muck structure on. I can start thinking about positioning my trees. So I'm just gonna tease these out. So I've picked a variety of different trees. So this one I thought made a nice yeah, little triple yeah, like trunk. Tr yeah. yeah, but I think that's something that's like quite trees. yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, quite likely to. And those long roots are useful. Yeah. Like, yeah, no, definitely not cut. No root cutting on this at all, hopefully. Yeah, I can't imagine why we'd want to. So, so we're just going to open these up a little bit. So this one's got a nice long root structure to it. So this is something that definitely would be good if we could get that up somewhere high because all of those I can then just lay yeah, straight down and I know yeah and, and it will it, so basically I'll cover most of this over but over time you'll be able to clear the earth away and then you will end up with a root over rock mm. as well but for now it's all going to be covered yeah. until I'm sh I'm certain that the yeah the ends are so vigorous yeah one small pot the roots are about <laughs> two feet long <laughs> come on get off right there you yeah. go so yeah, I mean, I can do all sorts of things with these. I could lay these oh, down in here and stuff like that, but you know, we'll just, I know you're in a bit of a hurry, so we'll get these in where we think they, so I quite like this one. This this one here has got three. I think that lives there. And then again, this root here, I can probably get that through and out the back. So again, I'm not losing any root here. Hopefully. See the importance of really to your small trees, you know, that it gives a sense of scale. Yes, yes. I mean, if I'd had the option, I would have used much bigger rocks. Um, but, you know, you've got to work with what you got, you know. And like you were saying, not everybody has everything everywhere all over the world. So, um, but what I did try to do was get things with different trunk sizes, um, just something that will make a, uh, a bit, bit of difference in interest. So this is going to be my sort of standalone tree over there that's the old granddad tree um, 
but these smaller ones, their growth would have been stunted by the very fact that they're grown on rocks. So um, that's why I think that the smaller trees should be at the top. So yeah, I'll just work away with these, get these positioned in, and then we can um, come back backfill. And then really, it's just a case of um, well, to my mind, you can't really plan this too much in advance. You just put the different trees, and when it looks right, you yeah you stop yeah yeah. Yeah. But again, I'm not, I'm not really losing any of these roots. So this one doesn't have a huge no, amount of root on it, so therefore I'm going to make sure it goes somewhere lower down. Somewhere lower down. And again, don't hide the rocks. No, no, defeat the object, yeah, so. completely defeat the object. You do want contrast, mm. you're, you're working with light, like with all art, you're working with contrast and colours, so you know, it's just a case of make, you know, we're trying to show the rocks off to their maximum. You know, this is, this is a gorge. Yeah, that's the way I'm gorge. seeing it. So this is like a pathway between two villages or something. Uh, that's how I'm probably going to end yeah. up filling it in. Um, so anyway, I'll play with these last two trees and then you can yeah. come back again. Again, again, we're not talking of uh, odd and evens. You see, when it looks right, it looks right. Yeah, yeah, you know? I mean, Generally, people odd know my views by yeah, all. I mean, all this superstition. Four is yeah, bad, no. eight is lucky. Yeah, when you um, think that eight is two fours, very unlucky. <laughs> double, double, yeah, bad luck. double bad luck. <laughs> yeah. I heard you say once, um, I'm not stu superstitions, but I don't, I don't want to tempt fate, and exactly. that made me laugh. That's right. <laughs> I was going to make a t shirt with that on it. You could obviously use a root hook instead of a chopstick. You don't have to yeah. use a chopstick. I just prefer chopsticks. But. So we've got four or five trees. Are you putting any more? Um, I think that's probably okay, going to be right. it. I feel yeah. like I've, there's something's yeah. going to go there, but I'm not quite that's sure. That's a very good yet. point, because a lot of people, if they say that I've got five trees, I've got to force it and I've got six <laughs> trees, I want to use them all. Yeah. Uh, and I think I may have used this analogy before. In Out in the East, where people are very ostentatious, they have a lot of jewellery. It's like saying that you wear all your jewellery to a wedding. Yeah. You don't have to wear all your jewellery that you want to a yeah. wedding, you know. <laughs> you just wear yeah, one yeah. or two yeah. nice bits. Yeah. So it's like that. So just one, because you have it, you don't have to use everything. So one of the things I've kind of learnt as I've gone along really is, is when I first started doing this, I made all of the land yeah. flat. Yeah. And obviously land isn't flat, yeah. yeah? So you want to make sure you've got contour. Well, again, if mm. I can just mention in Chinese, the word for landscape or painting, landscape painting is san sui, you know, means mountain and, and water. water. So with mountain and water, that is called landscape. So if you have a mountain and water or, uh, you know, undulating thing, that gives the sense of perspective and that is a classical landscape. So you always dress the back, even though yes, you know okay. you might not see it. We still dress the back, keeping this root. That's gonna be feeding that so tree. So it's nice from every side. See, this is where you see the rocks are so prominent. It's even more beautiful from there. Yeah. Yeah, I can't tell you how many times I've started yeah. styling something from the front and then thought the back looks nicer. So, <laughs> so we decided not to put the big one because that would offer scale. I think so, yeah. I think it's just, it would be a bit too dense yeah. for me. Right, That's just my opinion. Yeah. Um, I'm sure other people will disagree. There seems to be plenty yeah. of So this things. is more or less finished. And uh, what now Padre Pio is going to find is some moss if we can find yeah. moss. I think yeah. we have had rain, so there's yeah. moss. Yeah. And so then when it's completely covered in moss, we will then film it again. So thank you again okay. for doing it. And I'll take another shot. And Eric, I say, uh, Jerry. <laughs> 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 Thank, you. Thank you. <laughs> Jerry, okay. Right. And then we will show you the final thing. So that is so simple to do. Everyone can do that. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we don't have amazing. to do boring. We're just arranging. Yeah. Creating right. landscape in three dimensional form. We're going to try and find a pot. We're going to make a little lake. Oh, and they've seen uh, okay. one of the landscapes I made where I actually had like a cavern with a waterfall running through it. So, I mean, 
you know, given time, a nice little water through running yeah. down here, down to that would be nice. Yeah, so what you've done is a little oval under tray yeah. that we use for our plant pots and that gives us some of the water. How clever yeah. is that? And then I, what I'm hoping to do is, is to hide the hot, awful edges of the plastic pot by using our friendly moss so that that won't, you won't even see that. Um, this bigger moss, so I always try and find at least two or three different types of moss. Yeah, that's very thick carpet. Yeah, because it gives you different contrasts, oh, etc. And I particularly use it for going up the back okay. because I just don't want any of this to dry out. Okay. So if, I, if I've got this in, I know that, okay. or I, I'm hoping... But the thing is to keep it watered all the time. Yes, absolutely, yeah. yeah. I'm probably maybe yeah. being a bit too pedantic, but... Um, uh, there's few enough trees around as there is in my opinion so I, I try not to kill them if I can avoid it so if I can use the and also I think that this would be like hills in the distance yeah. something soft in the background you know um, maybe some or maybe fields that yeah. have that have been planted or something so again it's just working with the illusion and then the smaller stuff I generally use around the front because um, I think that adds to the whole getting the proportions uh, somewhat right so I mean you've seen me moss up enough things in the past so I'll, uh, I'll, I'll finish doing this and then yeah and then you can uh, we can go from there we'll use that for some so now let me show you what we've done so far so Admapri now is putting some very fine Japanese black gravel to simulate a path through the gorge. You can see the fascination of making these landscapes, you know. It's knowing when to stop. Nothing I find sophisticated, but it's very pretty. Three-dimensional painting, as it were, if you can use that analogy. Yeah. Yeah. So you can imagine why people prefer this to just the straight one tree. So I could go on forever. There's loads of little things that I can see here that I could add to. Um, we've got our little pond here. Um, we haven't got, it, got any water in yeah. it now, but um, maybe we can do that. Okay, you've got the water in there. So let's try and put some water in there. So like even, even here, I'm trying to make like the deeper part of the pond. Maybe even more water and then you've got gravel going out to it. So it just depends how far you want to go with with these things. So to me, that, that looks nice because you, it yeah, gives you the impression right. of depth in the yeah. pond. Um, but you know, whether you want to go that mad or not, that's up to you. But the basics are there, you know, um, there are still things I would do. Obviously, I'm going to clean these rocks up a little bit more to make them pop a little bit more. Um, and then I'm just going to let the whole thing settle okay. down. So again, to recap, we used, was it four rocks, eh? or five? Uh, five? Five, five, five in total. Yeah, yeah, one tall one and four shorter ones, and they've been tied in with wire. Yeah. The trees also, where they could be tied, they're tied in. Yeah. If not, the roots are just draped round. Yeah. And these uh, trees are only like three to four inches tall. That bigger one is about five inches tall. The overall height is no more than, say, 30 centimeter. But the pot is about a little over 60 centimeter long. So here we have that beautiful Penjing or Chinese potted scenery. So and we, also and we have been having Jerry a is here artistic. Because he's <laughs> Chinese, he likes bridges. <laughs> so he wants to put a bridge and uh, so you can comment in the notes yes. whether you prefer it with a bridge no, or without. As I say, <laughs> it's what you like. If you like it and you feel mm. great pleasure in doing it, you do it, you know. Uh, what I don't like to impose is that everyone says, oh, this is the only way to do it. That's not right. Everyone has a different perception of what is beautiful, what is nice. So you do what you like and it's just being creative. So there you go. Thank you, Padma Pia, for this valuable lesson. And, and Jerry. And Jerry also <laughs> for explaining the Chinese uh, philosophy and history of Pinjing, or meaning of Pinjing, or Pinking. So I hope you've all enjoyed this video. And this didn't take long to make. And no more than including drilling the rocks, it took in total about half an hour to do. There you go.